Okay, I got a, I got uh, several cases, so we can go back and forth. So uh, this one is, um, I have, uh, this one is a bilateral injury. So this is a 70 some year old who took a nasty fall. Um, she's got uh, left and right um, distal humerus fractures. Um, so you can see here, basically she has a comminuted uh, distal humerus, um, you know, um, and it looks like there is some sort of, you know, intraarticular extension in, in, in this piece. Um, as with any one of these, um, I usually do get advanced imaging uh, to look at, you know, the, the sequence. And one thing I want to ask, you know, Mike, so when you look at something like this, so, and I'm going to show you the uh, CT. Uh, there we go. So there is some, uh, there's some cuts right there that I think the most appropriate cuts right there. Basically, you can see that what is standing out to me and uh, is what you have is not only do you have an intraarticular component, you know, sitting right here, but there really is basically comminution pretty much on both sides, right? And the, the medial epicondyle is also off. So this kind of adds us a little bit more layer of complexity. So Mike, so let me ask you, so when you see something like this, or in general, when you have, you know, these uh, distal humerus fractures, what is your, you know, what, what typically is your fixation strategy? Are, are you a person that will fix the, the joint first and then build columns? Or do you fix columns first? Or kind of like, what is your sort of uh, gestalt way of doing it? So... I'll probably, I, I would tell you in general, I try to be flexible enough to let the fracture dictate and just start putting pieces together as it seems most obvious. But in concept, I, I have generally had the most success with um, building the small pieces into bigger pieces and then putting them together, which would be, and, and because I'm very concerned about maintaining articular congruence, I'll usually start, get the joint congruent, build the joint and distal uh, fragments first and then turn it into a supracondylar fracture and then go from there. Nice. So I am actually the exact opposite. So for, for, for most of uh, my periarticular work, I like to build to something that I know is in space. So for me, how I tackle these is I like to know, I like to try to build one column first, either the medial side or the lateral side, and then I'll build the joint to that column so that I know I have the, the relate, spatial relationship of the joint, right? So I think it's still the same thing. So my strategy is my C type of the, my C something like this, I, I look at it as like, okay, how can I build this up? What do I do? And so sometimes I'll see a read on the lateral side or on the medial side, and then I'll just kind of go in a sort of a semi-circle fashion where I'll build one column, reduce the joint and go to the other column. I think on this one, when I don't have those tremendous reads, then yes, I, you know, my then tendency is to build from the, from the joint up. So this is, uh, this is her, this is, this, sorry, this didn't turn out right. The CR, <laughs> the, you know, you probably can't really get a good view of this. This is her in the OR, this is the traction view, right? And so, you know, I know in training, we all talk about traction views. Um, I typically will get them in the operating room once they're asleep, so I can kind of get a, an idea of if it's going to cooperate with my preoperative plan or not, but that's her attraction view. So you can definitely see the medial epicondyle's off. There's comminution. There's actually comminution in the lateral side. And then she has a, you know, so this, this is more like a C2 type injury really. So that's sort of what I did. So you can see my floor, I think I, I put my floros next. Um, sorry to, no, oh, my final, sorry. So this is sort of what we did. So on something like this, just because, you know, I thought there was a lot, there's a little bit more comminution, I think in the joint than there was, um, you know, shown. I actually do, I actually don't wait to do an osteotomy. I actually am pretty aggressive with those. And so for me, uh, I think I get really good visualization of it. And so you can see here my, just by looking at it, you can see kind of my, um, this uh, thought process is this mini plate on this side is building the lateral column to the shaft. And then I will fix, you know, then I'll fix the joint um, with uh, lag screws, um, independent inter, uh, interfragmentary lag screws. Then I will uh, build, and then I have the plate here, then I will build to the medial side, I'll fix the epicondyle back to the joint, and then I'll fix this. And this was all common. So this part was not the cleanest of reads, but so that's kind of 
you know, the, the sequence on her left arm. This is a her, it's the bilateral injury, really. Um, any thoughts, and Mike? No, I think it looks great. Um, I would say that um, you're right. You're fighting for space. You got a lot of screws across the, uh, the distal component, which you did better than I did on my first case. And it's, it uh, is deceiving how much um, uh, spatial talent it is required to get those screws all the way across and miss them. Yeah. So, yeah. And without breaking the drill bit, because those drill bits are very, are very flimsy. Ask me how I know. Right. So, but yeah. I, I think you probably take a little bit of a slow approach, kind of pass it through, feel your way along, and it'll, it'll kind of guide you a little bit if you're not hasty. Right. Right. Exactly. And I totally agree. So that was her left side. So this is her right side. So the only thing about this one now, so tell me, Mike, when you look at something like this, so, you know, I, I you know, the elf in the room, you see this stem up here. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, so, now, so now that adds, it's a little bit layer, a little bit more of a complexity because now she's, and you can tell her bone quality is not that good, right? And she has that stem that looks a little bit loose, right? She's got some, there's, there's some halo effect on that. So, so there's something going on there, but anyway, that's besides the point. So now she has this. And, um, and so, yeah, so, you know, I think, again, for, you know, I think either way works in terms of doing these. I'm, like I said, I'm super aggressive when it comes to osteotomies. I, I know, I know there's more of a trend now or, you know, where you can try to visualize the joint uh, just by doing a tricep sparing approach really and try to get the joint reduced and you can then do everything without the osteotomy. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm like you, I want the joint to be right. And so for me, I need this division to make sure the joint is right. So, you know, I, I'm pretty aggressive. Um, I don't know, Mike, are, 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 what about you? Or do you go pretty quickly to that? Or are you, are you pretty facile in doing these uh, tricep sparing type of, uh, of way no. of the joint? I would tell you that I learned with the electron osteotomy. And so of course that's my reflexive comfort level. I've tried, I will try when I can to do a, um, a, a sparing approach, but I'm very quick to go to the, uh, to the osteotomy because it really gets you a great, great look. You're able to expose it. You can um, protect the adjacent structures uh, well. And uh, I, I agree with you. And I just really haven't had uh, enough, I guess I have famous last words, but I haven't had enough complications from them to warrant being wary of it. As, as a good choice and it just, I'm, I'm able to get that reduction. So I'm, for an intraarticular uh, fragment, now this I might consider otherwise because mm -hmm. it's relatively straightforward on its face. But if you look closer, there's more comminution than you think. And I would, uh, I'd get in there, I'd be prepared to do just what you do. Yep, and so here's the CT. So again, um, I, you know, on, on face value, I think it is a little bit more complicated because there is comminution in the joint, but also again, the medial, the medial condyle is off. And it appears to me also that the, the joint um, has some, might have some sort of in, impaction in there as well. So again, given the age and stuff like that. So for those reasons, um, I typically go to an osteotomy just to make sure the joint is right. So again, for me, it's kind of the same, same uh, way I, I, I handle it. This is again, the traction view in the operating room. Okay, so again, you can see free fragment here. I think there's more to it than just that. There's, there's some more comminution, there's this, this split, and then obviously this own separate column detached from the joint, and then the entirety of the lateral column, right? So uh, again, just to confirm what I already know, but just kind of helps me kind of look at it live in the operating room. So this is sort of what was done. Um, so again, I, I, I do this, you know, this one was a little bit different because of the long split, right? So I'm able to, um, you know, put those together. And like I said, I like to work where at least one side, and this, this is how I do most of it, even when I do my, my pylons and stuff like that, I like to have one thing where I can work to and build to. That's just my strategy. And so that's why I have a lot of, I use a lot of, you'll see on the next example, I use a lot of mini plates if I can because that will hold at least one segment for me to, to build across. And then I kind of work my way across, get the joint right, and then kind of build up and then kind of span the, the entirety of it. So 
again, kind of a similar thing, just a different level of, uh, of injury. Uh, but you have to definitely kind of go high so you don't get a stress riser, right? So yeah, I'm glad that you that. brought that out because it was uh, on my mind. That, <laughs> uh, not only is this a very um, at risk, but she looks pretty osteopenic or osteoporotic even. She is, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and, and like you, I got her moving early and just a lot of interfrag uh, screws to kind of hold it. Uh, this plate actually allows not only posterior lateral fixation into the capitellum, but also has screws that also allow me to go across. So I get more screws in a lateral to medial direction rather than just more of a posterior anterior direction. So I think that's- And I noticed you didn't fill all of your holes. Yeah, I, I typically don't. I, I think, um, um, yeah, I, I and, and you'll see on the, on the next case, I typically don't. I like, to, I, I just fill what I need to fill in terms of uh, getting the, the screws in the joint because you know all these plates, right? The higher you go, they just fill right here, right? They don't go into the joint. So it's just, it's just uh, stuff that's just adding a little bit more rigidity. And I think sometimes these fractures, I think if you get them right, and this one, like I said, I had lag screws and I used a plate. I had fixation provisionally. This was more just as a fortifying fixation. So, you know, again, just something to, uh, to hold it. And I think, I think it would be fine. And, and she's doing well, obviously. So I saw her, she's now well over three months and I got her moving pretty way and she's gone to heal. I, I agree with I mean, that bunch of concept of more plate and instead of more screws. Yeah. I mean, why don't you go ahead and try and do a quick one in about three okay. minutes if you can. Okay, this is this is the high energy case. Um, so I had that one. This is more of a, of a higher energy um, injury. This was a younger uh, gentleman, uh, uh, MVC, had multiple um, orthopedic injuries. And this is the fracture that he presented here with this distal humor. So obviously you can tell it is intra-articular, it is comminuted. Um, and again, I think for this case, what... <laughs> while I was trying to highlight for this case was the use that I use a lot of. Um, I use a lot of provisional fixation, um, totally independent of, uh, of wires. Um, so for me, as I'm putting this thing back together with a lot of um, strategically placed mini fragment plates, here's the x-rays or the CT scans uh, showing the, just the comminution, impaction, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, you know, the tired of lateral side dislocated her, his ulnar nerve was intact and actually he wasn't having, uh, he wasn't having, uh, you know, neuritis. So, you know, good for him. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, that's kind of the fixation that I did. I, I just, and I point this out because again, I build with the columns. I use a lot of, I use a lot of mini type uh, plates to help, um, you know, hold the entirety of the columns together. And I think that really not only adds stability to when you fix uh, distal humerus fractures, but I think also it, uh, um, it has stability, but also allows you to not have all these wires in the way. And then you can just put your plates around it, but you have to be strategic, obviously, to know where to put them and they have to be low profile. So these are just like, you know, two O plates, you know, nothing to, this one's on the lateral side. And because of the comminution on that lateral side, I use a little bit more of a robust plate, but again, that just holds everything together so that you don't have many wires away. And it, and it holds it better than wires anyway, right? So you can put all the wires in the world you want. When you put plates on, it's still gonna move, especially when you put these big plates. So these plates actually function in a little more of a rigid fashion. So it really helps kind of hold fragments together. So when you put these big plates on, you don't create a malreduction when you, cause none of the, cause you know, like one size fits none. So basically when you put them on, you know, you're not inducing a, a malunion. So they tend to hold pretty well. So I, that's kind of how I do things in, in the sense of my um, approach to these. I don't know, Mike, any, any thoughts? No, I like the idea of using those mini plates to hold provisional fixation. I think that's, that gained some popularity over the last uh, several years and not only here, but say in the tibia or other areas where you have some combination. I think it's, it's a great addition and you're right. Um, helps hold it in place and helps uh, the frust keeps you, helps you avoid the frustration of watching that loss or reduction as you put the final plate on. Yeah, especially when I do like, if I do like, you know, same with pylons or even distal femurs or whatever, if I find ways I can put a plate on rather than wires, I'm much happier because when I put the final plate on, I'm not inducing any sort of, uh, you know, uh, loss of reduction because wires can only do so much 